my name is Terry Sprown. I want to welcome you to my studio. Tonight I'm feeling a little steampunky. I actually made this at Joe's place when I was there last year. And I want to welcome you to my studio. And also, if this is our live Tuesday night show. So if you're watching this at a later day, please subscribe to my YouTube and give me a thumbs up. Tonight we are going to continue in our art journal um, book. And we're going to play with Golden's Clear Tar Gel. So this should be fun. And I kind of was experiment the other day and kind of came up with a kind of cool technique. So I think you guys will like it. Well, at least I hope so. I thought it was really cool. So anyways, I'm going to switch cameras. We're going to get going. I also have Joe here. He's going to put all the links to all the products that we're going to use in tonight's um, show. Okay. So let's go ahead and change cameras. Okay, there we go. Perfect. I want to put... Okay. Um, first thing I want to do is paint some chipboard pieces because I need to have these dry and, um, you know, working for me for later when I go to embed them into um, the page that I want to do. So I am going to start off using some silk acrylic glazes from color art and while i'm talking about color art um there is a brand new blog that we just started over there on color art i kind of gave you guys a little bit of a hint about this last um last week and the link to that is colorart.blogspot.com and they have a really nice challenge up right now that everybody can get involved in and what you would do is use those three colors that I talked about last week, the primary colors, and um, do any type of project you want. And then you will link that project up to that blog post. So that's a really fun. And the, the prize is either um, first prize wins $40 to the um, store, but two other people get to be a guest designer the following month. So that's kind of fun. So I'm just um, painting some of these chipboards. And all of the chipboard that I'm using tonight is from Gina Design Laser Cuts. She's got some really, really nice chipboard over there. Um, I have to admit, I, I'm, I think I'm in love with it. I use it all the time. Um, so go check out her site and check out her chipboard. And I am putting two coats on to this because I didn't prime it and there was a reason for it because the silks really go on to um, raw chipboard really nice. And if you would have, if I want to put gesso down, it would have given me a white base and the white base kind of changes the color a little bit. So I really didn't want to do that. I just rather go in and put two coats of, you know, the uh, acrylic on so remember if you have any questions please put it in caps and we will do our best to see that this first color I used is called golden I don't know how to pronounce that last word that's the word so that's the first one I used now while my chipboards just a little wet from the paint I am going to just pour a little bit of um, uh, embossing powder on and the the acrylic paint will actually hold the um, embossing powder down so it will act just like a embossing ink would and I didn't put it over the whole piece I only did it on um, little sections and then I'm gonna go ahead and heat that So it kind of gave me a really cool rusty, you know, a little more texture to it than just plain paint. So think about using your embossing powders that way.
I really like the way that looks. Check this one out. See how that gave me a really cool look? Now, if you think about it, you could definitely do um, uh, like a green, which would give a, a patina look. Okay. Let me go ahead and paint a few more. This one is called Silver Bells. Again, this is the uh, silk acrylics. Haven't used this color yet. Got to clean my brush off. Also, over at um, Sin City, if you're interested in um, winning some stamps, if you go to Sin City's um, Facebook page, and Joe's going to throw the link in there, and that if you're um, watching this, it'd be Sin City would be the Facebook page. They are having a really fun contest right now. If you um, subscribe and like to a few of their things, you're going to get um, a chance to win Danielle Hayes, which is probably in the room. I'm pretty sure I seen her in here earlier. Um, her brand new set of stamps. Now on the silver, I'm actually going to grab a little bit of copper. Um, embossing powder this time. I'm just going to make it a little different. So again, painted it while the paint's still wet. That's important. You want to add your embossing powder. I'm going to let those two dry for just a second because they're still quite wet. And then I'll heat set that embossing powder. Now this is solar gold. This is such a pretty color. Definitely wanted to do this crown in solar gold. So definitely check out those two events that are going on right now. It's drying very quickly over here, so I'm going to go in with my second coat. It is warm here today. Not that I'm complaining. It's not as bad as it was last week. <laughs> so yeah, all you have to do is share that like that page over at um, Sin Cities and you're um, and subscribe to a couple channels and you're automatically en enrolled. I want to go in with the. I put the copper on top of the gold on these uh, gears. So again, all of this chipboard that I am uh, playing with right now is from Gina Design Laser Cuts. Okay, I'm going to heat set this one up here. My, my paint is actually bubbling, um, which usually I, I don't want it to do, but in this case, it's going to give me some really cool texture, so I'm not going to worry about it, but remember that if you do heat set acrylic paint and you get it too hot, you will have that problem, so, um, you know, just a, a heads up if you start seeing your, uh, your paint start moving, don't worry. Okay, can't get that to move. Why can't I get that to move? I want it to go that way. There we go. There we go. Now it's working. So, so yes, if you are getting your paint um, bubbling, that's why. But I kind of like the bubbling. Oh, it also starts smoking, but that's okay. Okay. Now, I have one more piece that I want to color, but I 
I'm just dying to see what this color is. I just got this one in the, um, in the last order that I did. This is the Primary Elements, which is pigment powder from Color Art. And this one is called, listen to the name of this one, Dragon Wings. Now, I don't have this in a silk. So what I'm going to do is um, over at Color Arts, they also have a glaze. And what I'm going to do is make my own. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of glaze down. Let me zoom out for you guys a little bit. Tiny bit of glaze down. And a tiny bit of this pigment. And I'm basically going to make my own silks. Because I don't need that much because I'm just going to paint these two wings. So I'm just adding a little bit of silks directly into that glaze. And seeing what color... Ooh, is that pretty. Seeing what color I come up with. I just love the name of it. I had to use it. Okay, I'm going to add a little more of the glaze to it. Because I think I'm going to need a little more than that. Oh, this color is so pretty, guys. Wow. So what's really cool is these primary elements, which I'm going to use them in a different way here in a minute, can also be made to make your own paint. So basically what I just did is made my own paint. So these are a really good value because you're going to get a lot, you can do a lot of different things with them. So these are beautiful wings that I also got at Gina Laser Cut. Gina Design Laser Cuts. I always say her name backwards. Hold on, let me get you in, in camera there. And I'm just painting these wings with that beautiful color I just made. And see, at this point, if you wanted to add glitter or something to that, you could add glitter to that. You can do anything you want to that paint, because you just made it. I'm getting a nice coat on those too. Okay. So there's all my pieces that I want to have for later. And this is such a pretty color. I'm glad I tried it. Okay. I'm going to put this stuff to the side. Let it dry. Okay. Bringing our book in. Making myself room. Bringing our book in. Okay. Did a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of prep. I um, took out two dictionary pieces of paper from, you know, this piece of dictionary, and I just ripped from the back. And someday it'll be, I'll be up to DAs. And I did gel medium. I put some gel medium down on my sheets, and then I laid my piece of paper down. I specifically did not put the gel medium everywhere because I wanted to be able to rip away and not have harsh edges. So that's my next plan was to rip away all the excess that's not glued down. And I'm not caring how good it's, um, how much I covered, I guess. Because I'm just getting some texture in the background. I can't believe I just threw that on the floor after. I actually, this is going to be funny. I vacuumed my studio today. I can't tell you the last time I got a vacuum in here. <laughs> so that was a huge accomplishment. And here I'm throwing the stuff on the floor. So basically what this is doing is just giving me a little bit of texture, a little bit of fun in the background. Just to start my sheet off a little bit. Now, I'm also going to take... When I was rummaging through my uh, stuff the other day, I found this Pennsylvania Railroad, I think it's Work, work Safety um, Reports Sheets. And I'm just going to... Uh, I think you got those from my ephemera bath. I might have. They're pretty mm -hmm. cool. I'm search your bags next time. <laughs> Everything I stole, I told you. <laughs> I'm stealing this, Joe. <laughs> I'm an honest thief, you know. Give me credit here. I'm an honesty. Okay, I'm taking gel medium. And I'm just going to uh, glue these pieces down. And again, this is just to give myself texture in the background. 
and I'll worry about that edge that I just missed. And I'm not even going to worry about this being perfect because when I put the uh, the gel over it in a minute, which is the next step we're going to do, it's going to hold down anything that I didn't get um, glued down well. So I don't even have to worry about getting this perfect. Okay. There's my background going. Make sure I'm going the right way. And I'm not. I'm almost so used to working upside down that I don't know how else to do it. Okay. Now, we're going to use... Grabbing some primary elements. These are basically pigment powders. I need my paintbrush. I need something to hold this page down because it's driving me nuts. Okay, this is clear tar gel from Golden. Okay, that's what we're going to use. And you need a palette knife for this. And I put kind of a thin coat, but you want to get this coat on the whole background. And I didn't want it overly thick, but I do want a nice coat. So I'm just using my palette knife and I'm spreading it out. This is why I was saying that this is going to encapsulate anything that I had down already. So it's not going to matter if I missed, you know, something being glued down all the way. And you can find this at Michael's or Dick Blick's or, you know, any of that. I actually gave Joe a link to um, Dick Blick's that he probably already put up. And it's the A to Z um, kit from uh, Golden. And it comes with a lot of really cool stuff. And one of the things that's in it is this gel. So if you're looking for kind of like a, a starter all over kit from Golden, that A to Z kit that I put on Joe's for Joe to put up from Dick Blicks is pretty cool. And some of the paints that they have in that kit are some of their most expensive paints that they have out there. So you're getting a good deal. Okay. Now, I'm going to drop prime elements into this, which are um, artist pigments. But honestly, you can add... Um, um, high flows into this also golden high flows will also work okay but i'm going to use these uh primary elements and these are basically uh mica pigments and i'm going to pick them up with my brush and just start laying it into my into that um gel and in the beginning, it kind of looks like it's just sitting up on the surface. And it probably is in the beginning. But it starts soaking in. And what I'm going to call blooming, it kind of like blooms out into the medium. And really turns out kind of cool. You don't need a lot of this. Matter of fact, the, I mean, the little is all you really need. And I'm picking up all kinds. I'm kind of going with a steampunky theme, like I told you. So I'm using like coppers and gold. I use the gold the most intense because it's going to be the brightest and I don't want this to be, become too um, dark. And I believe this is copper that I'm picking up right now. Okay. Let me see if I can get the name of this one on the bottom. So 
not, this is this is not easy. You can't turn just like drop this and turn this over. Um, actually, that was gold dust, so it's kind of a goldy too. This one is called Copper Penny. So again, I'm just picking it up with the brush. You could use a tiny spoon also, however you want to control it. You can already start to see it blooming. Let me kind of go in a little close so you guys can start seeing that, start activating and blooming. Especially, see this one right there? See it? It's already starting to bloom. And I don't know if that's the technical name, but that's what I'm going to call it, blooming. Okay, and I got one more color here. This is bronze. Now, when you buy them, you're going to actually get them in a jar that looks similar to this one. I have the um, the big teacher's edition so because I teach with these. So I buy the really big ones. You do not need to have anything as close to this size because, trust me, it will uh, last you a really long time. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to let that start setting up. Let me zip out for you guys. Oh, actually, I want to put, I don't know why, but I have this desire to put a blue in there. And this is, um, God, I forgot to, forgot to look at the bottom. Hold on, give me a second. Oh, look at that bottom here and tell you what color that is. Oh, yeah, I'm glad I did put the blue in there. So, perfect. Oh, I like you. Okay. Sorry about that. Let me zoom out here. Forgot I was still zoomed in. <laughs> there we go. I'm liking that. Now, what's really cool is this it will also act as an adhesive. So at this point, I can start putting my pieces into it. I have this really cool ephemera piece that's actually, I will hate to admit it, I think it's Tim Holtz. And I'm going to put that in right here. And then I have all these really cool pieces that we just played with. That there. Oh, my wings. So again, these are just going to lay right into the uh, the gel and hold down for me. I don't even have to glue them down. I'm going to have to glue down a few things because. Already, it's actually starting to dry right here. That's how warm it is here today. But I'm going to do something else here in a second. Okay. Now. Check out how, how cool this is. I don't want to forget his crown. I'm going to put the crown on there in a minute. Now, the other day I was playing with this, and I actually used this tool to do what I'm going to do next. But you need to be able to run out to your sink immediately after doing this and put this in water. And since I don't have the ability to do that, I made my own out of a credit card or out of a room key card. Key card. So you can just cut one or, you know, use something else or even a toilet paper holder. So what you can do at this point is this will hold texture. So you can start coming in and making lines into it. God, I finally know what to do with pinking shears. <laughs> exactly. Or, or all those scrapbook scissors that people used to buy. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's a great one because you could get all kinds of really cool 
effects with that. So what's this doing is, is I'm not sure, oh, you can kind of see it. It's, it's holding the, the um, whatever texture I'm putting into it, it's holding it for me. And I really thought that was kind of cool. And this is drying kind of quickly. Probably a little warm in here today, but it's kind of a cool technique to do. So it's allowing me to put all kinds of fun texture in it. So you could just take the credit card and do the hash, you know, hash marks. So you can have all kinds of fun, you know, ways of making different texture. Because it's going to hold it really well. hope you guys can see that. I'm going to zoom in here for you guys in a second. I'm going to get these things out of my hands because they're all sticky and nasty. So the advantage of those is I got to throw those right away. So let me zoom in there. See? Oh, yeah. You can see it. See the lines that I put in? See how it's holding it? Here, let me get it to, to focus for us. Come on. See the texture put in there? Isn't that cool? Oh, there's a perfect, perfect focus. And you can see the circles down there on the bottom. So isn't that kind of cool? I kind of like this technique. I, thank you, um, Susan. It is a kind of a different um, technique, huh? I, I really think it's fun. I, I, I don't know why. I just thought this was so cool when I played with this the other day. So actually, um, I'm just going to put a little bit of paint around the edge and I think I'm pretty much done oh I want to put his crown on so I do need to do some gel medium where's my gel medium because so I made that crown we need to put his crown on so he's not going to have a hat he's going to have a crown okay and then I want to use autumn leaf, one of my favorite colors in um, silks, as you can see, because it's almost gone, almost gone. I need to buy another one soon. I'm, I'm collecting a pile over here of colors I need to reorder, and I just want to go around the edge. Now I'm hoping it doesn't bleed too much into the gel. That's not what my idea was, but... We're going to go with it. If it does, it does. Right? If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's all good. I'm going to have to definitely clean this brush really well because I am going over some wet gel. And it, it will ruin your paintbrush. So make sure you do clean your, your uh, paintbrush. You don't want this stuff to dry in it. Okay. I am going to go grab a baby wipe. Tone that down a little. <laughs> it's sticking to the gel. <laughs> oh, well. We're experimenting. I likey. I like the way this turned out. I wasn't quite sure exactly how it was going to turn out, but I think that turned out pretty cool. The only thing I think I don't like, I think, how can I fix that? I thought I could spray something on it. I do have an idea. Let me grab a color real quick. Because I don't like how white the background is. I'm going to fix that. Okay, I grabbed my uh, Dilutions uh, spray in uh, melted chocolate. And I just want to 
I don't want him to be sprayed. So I just want it to be a little darker in the background. I don't like all the the white. And any overspray, I can just clean that off real quick. And I'm going to take. Uh, don't have my kitchen towel in here, so I'm going to grab. Just do a quick dab. Which is grabbing the uh, the paint really well, so <laughs> probably not the best idea, but it's kind of pulling it up too. It's kind of different. Oh well. Okay, I have to admit, probably one of my not one of my favorite pages, but I like the technique of how the gel holds the the images in. So it was a good technique, and that's the one thing that I want to remind you about doing art journals. This is your place to play. If you don't, if you do something and say I don't necessarily love this page, and I admit I don't love it, but it's a really cool technique. I learned something that I did like, and um, I do it again. Here's the actual the one that I was playing with the other day that I did kind of a sample with, so you can see how it pulls the um, holds the texture really well. So it's kind of the same idea, but not quite this dark. So again, I like it, but I don't like it. But I like the technique, and that's the important part. Does anybody have any questions? I'm going to switch back cameras. I'm here watching on YouTube. Well, thank you for watching on YouTube. I appreciate it. Okay, there's me again. So again, um, all the fun part about playing in your art journal is you can take these techniques and be can put onto a canvas, or you can learn and play and use products that you might not have ever tried before. I've actually tried this before, but you know, try something new. Play with a product that you've never tried. And actually you can buy these um, smaller ones. And that AZ container that I was telling you about has a bunch of tubes like this in it that are kind of small. So you're not buying a big jar that you might not like to use it and never use it again. So it's a really good way to play. So. Okay, if nobody has any more questions, we're going to actually let you go. We're getting out of here in a half hour. Oh, no class next Tuesday. Reminder. Okay, um, looks like we have no questions. I want to thank everybody for showing up. We had a lot of people in the room again. I really appreciate it. Thank you again, and I will see you in two weeks. Two weeks. Have a good one. Bye.